for staying with us. Joining us on the show is the convener of Center for Women's Health and Information, um, Atinuke Odukoya. It's an in independent, non-for-profit making non-organization that is providing the most secure psychological support, help for victims of sexual and domestic violence in terms of rehabilitation of survivors. Welcome, Madam, to the show. Good morning. Good, Good to morning, have you. Ladies. So in the last week, we've been discussing domestic violence, and um, it's almost as if every week on something which just happens in this country. Now, mm -hmm. this week, we're talking about um, um, school negligence, parental negligence, you know, psychological breakdown of, 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 of women and um, um, spouses in this kind of situation. Let's start with, the, with domestic violence. And um, the last one week, many people have come out young girls are saying, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking up my engagement, I'm stopping this marriage because I don't want to go into uh, 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 this, kind of, this kind of relationship. What are the damages, psychological damages to domestic violence, especially on children? And how is that part of what we're seeing today, where kids seem to be totally um, um, out of hand? Okay, so um, when we talk about domestic violence, we all know that it has implications. Implications not just for the mothers or whoever the survivor is, but for the children that are being raised within those settings, particularly within those settings. And um, a lot of things are happening with the children. There's a lot of emotional damage. There's a lot of mental damage. There's a lot of even physical damage to the children, depending on what is going on within the space, um, the space where those children are being raised. Um, in spaces where you have issues of incest, in spaces where you have issues of whether it's the father in the house or the child or even the next door neighbor, grooming, defiling, um, conditioning children to certain kinds of um, habits and attitudes, you begin to see the kind of um, expressions, sexual expressions that is difficult for us to comprehend. And we keep looking out for who is to blame or who is at fault in this area. Um, someone, a survivor of sexual abuse within the domestic sphere, had once said to me how the abuse itself conditions them into habits that make them, you know, people will talk about nymphomaniacs, people will talk about, mm. oh, there's something wrong with this girl, she's always jumping around from one place to the other. But that person has been groomed and has become habit-forming. Um, in most of our homes, in our society, we pretend the ostrich. We actually don't want people to understand or to know what's going on within our settings, um, whether at home, whether at work, wherever the space is. We have that habit of trying to protect what is not, what you can't right. protect really right. because it's out there yeah. in the sphere. Right. And so we see issues um, repeat itself mm. amongst our children. Mm. More often than not, in a household where a mother has no voice, I'll give an example. We do capacity building for... Um, like law enforcement agents in Lagos State, on how to respond to and support survivors of sexual and gender-based violence. And in one of our trainings, we discovered one gentleman mm. amongst them in his household would, have, would not have his wife speak. His wife can't speak. And I was taking a session, and I discovered that if I said something, everyone would laugh and point at this guy. So I thought, oh, something is off. And I'm like, hey, what's going on here? So they said, oh, all the things you're saying, in his house, no one speaks. I found that strange. And so I engaged in a conversation, and I felt, let's get to the root of this. And in engaging with this gentleman, he said, oh, women are not allowed to speak in my house. And I'm like, oh, really? Why? What, what brought about that? And he said, well, I grew up with my grandfather, and in my grandfather's household, women don't speak. Once he gets back, the women are quiet. I wanted to know why. And his grandfather had four wives. It had been, of course, four wives, bickering and all yeah, of that. And so I think the man just didn't want to die before his time and decided that once I get back to this house, everybody silent. Right. So I asked him, your parents? He said, yes, his dad. How many wives did your dad have? Three. Oga, how many wives do you have? One. Why shouldn't she talk? He said, well, that's what I've seen all my life, so why should she talk? And I said, oh, okay, let's put your wife on the one side. Why shouldn't your daughters speak? Mm -hmm. So he says the rule in his house, once his sons are talking, particularly when they are older than the child, she must not say anything. I said, oh, have you ever heard of the word incest? Mm -hmm. He paused and he said, yes. I said, you think it can't happen in your household? And he said, God forbid. I said, God forbid. God we forbid all don't want that to happen. But if you've trained your daughter never to, to speak, speak. Mm. or she knows 
that if my brother did something or tried something, or even my brother's friend, my voice is never, heard. never mm. to be heard. Mm. She's going to be silent. Mm. They're going to abuse her consistently. And then this man pauses and he's wondering, and he says, ah, I didn't see it like that. Mm -hmm. I said, yes. And she's not going to tell her mom. Why won't she tell her mom? Her mom has no voice. Mm. Sure. Do you understand? So right. those things would happen, right. and it will promote stuff. And we wouldn't know. If something happens, everybody would say, ah, her mother was there. Mm. Why did her mother keep quiet or incest? Okay, let me give you mm. more questions for you. So yeah. um, mm. while we're having this conversation, I, I mentioned yesterday, mentioned it today, that this, and I'm happy that YK happened on it as well, that these children involved in this particular um, case we were discussing before you came in, um, need psychological help yeah. and that whatever has happened can be corrected they can they can they can move on from this place where they are now which which is a disadvantageous place to be in and become a better version of themselves same with gender based violence women can have been in a relationship where they've been beaten and find a solution, but people don't think so. So I'd like you, from your, from a professional perspective, to help people understand how that change can happen. How someone that has been disenfranchised all her life, who's been beaten, who has no voice, can then begin to find her voice and where, what the place of therapy is. All right. So um, we have something that we do in the organisation, and it's called training. Um, psychological or psychosocial first aid. Mm -hmm. We all know what first aid is. It's like having a band aid. You have an injury and you need band aid. And there are three core things about it. It's look to see what's happening around the environment, listen, and then link. Um, in terms of listening, and it's interesting, I was listening to a part of your conversation as you were going on in the previous sense. Everyone around a survivor has an opinion or an impression of what went wrong, what went right, what they should have done, what they shouldn't have done, how they should have done it, how they should not have done it. And this in itself keeps people within a space where they don't want to speak mm. because they're judged. Mm. So part of listening is do not judge. Just hear out the person's story and then connect. And there are different areas where you can be connected to. So for a survivor, for instance, what does that person need within their particular situation? I say to people, no two situations are the same. True. Your husband beats me. My husband beats me. They're not the same. Mm -hmm. The situations are different. Our psychological makeup are different. Mm -hmm. Our levels of resilience are different. All right? So we, we tend to give a one-size-fits-all definition for everyone. So I would say that in listening, you need to understand what does this person need. Is it justice? We talk about women and we say, hey, why did she stay there? They beat you and they, you are going to die and you are still remaining there. Hey, some people need to live like yesterday. Otherwise, they're the next <coughs> statistic. Some people need to plan, have an exit plan. Mm. I'm leaving. But if I leave now, mm. we will suffer. Mm. My children will suffer. Can I have an exit plan? And they need to work with someone, a social right. worker, a psychotherapist, a psychologist, that can help them to map out that plan. And some people do not need to leave. I am in no way condoning violence. Yes. Mm. But some people, what is it that you're facing? Their anger issues, their anger management classes. Right now, mm. In our environment, we do not, we see anything psychological as madman. Mm. Once we took psychology, psychiatry, mm. ah, this person is mad. But there are help. There's help for a, someone in depression. There's help for mm. someone with anger management. Mm. There's help. And the same thing applies to this kind of child awesome. you were talking about. Thank you about. for that. Because I've been asking this question since Monday. This is last week about this issue. Because I, I was worried that, um, I was worried that, People, people who are judging women who choose to stay. Mm. And I kept saying, and, I, and I'm, so I think you just answered that question properly, in the sense that you started off well, he's a good guy, you had a fantastic marriage, and he lost his job, you went into depression, and something happened, and he hit you. Now, so in that kind of situation, there could be anger management problem where he can help, we can get help. Mm -hmm. There could be a situation where you can understand that, okay, this man is going through, you can separate yourself from that violence while he gets help. It doesn't mean that you have to stay there, but when you shouldn't be judged that you chose to stay or to mm. work on that marriage. That, mm. That's what I was saying. That, that, that kind of person, can that person choose to stay and work on that marriage? Okay, so let's get something clear. Yeah. That someone hits you is a no-no. Mm. I mean, he's angry. Eh? If he's on the bus and the bus conductor annoys him, he's going to pull his fist out. He can't. That is about power and control. Yeah. The power over. 
The reason you see men pulling out their fists or their belt or kicking or anything is because they've seen this woman that seemingly is helpless. How many times would you hear of a woman that the first time the man brought out his belt, she carried the stool and broke his head? He would do it a second time. <laughs> he would. Uh, and I'm not preaching violence. Yes. I'm not she saying not do to. that. All I'm saying is that for each time you cower, for each time society tells you, hey, be patient, hey, submit, hey, do what yeah, he wants enabling. you to do. Uh, all the enablers, all the flying monkeys. And by the way, we have a society of enablers. Mm. All of us, we're always enabling one thing or the other. We enable the school, we enable the parent, we enable the husband, we, we keep enabling. We won't take responsibility. You know, we won't take responsibility. There's bad behavior, there are no the consequences. Going on the wrong side of the road. We <laughs> enable everything. In domestic violence, we haven't seen the ramifications yet. Mm. We mm. haven't seen anything yet. All of us parents, I, you know, I'm wondering at this 10-year-old, and I'm like, God, if this was my child, what would I be doing? Mm. But what is it that is happening? We have a society where, whether it's Gen Z or it's Gen Alpha, mm. my daughter keeps saying, Mommy, you mix it up. Gen Z, Gen Alpha, Gen whatever they are called. No, Gen Alpha are they are ones. tired of the hypocrisy. They are tired of we say one thing from the one side and we're doing else. something on the other end. They're tired of mommy, they slap you blue black in the house. And then you put on your powder and you go out there and you're like, oh, you're this pious woman. Mm. They're tired of it. And I've seen children so say react. to church um, Sunday school teachers that hey, my daddy can come and bamboozle you here. No, no, not me. Mm. Don't tell me what to do. Don't, they're bringing out something from their inside. Mm. I'll what? give you a story that I can't really verify. Mm. But a story that I heard from one of the big schools, again, schools, and a child that had taken his father's iPad, you know, the tablet, mm. to school. And the other children in school were just browsing through and all of that. And guess what? Pornographic content on his the father's father, The father iPad. himself. The father himself with someone. Unfortunately, hey, the someone, someone that they knew. was the mother of one of the children. Hey. Like I said, I didn't verify the story. I'd heard it. But you can imagine that for the, child, child. The, the, the level of rebellion that child would have. You can experience. imagine another class how rebellion. that child, I mean, so it does one or two things. Mm. In any household where there is violence, domestic violence, okay, so whether the mother is like, eh, where will I go? Because there are several reasons why women don't leave. Mm. One question we want to ask ourselves is how much support system do we have for these women mm. as a society? Because if okay. they're ministers in church, suddenly the microphone is taken off their hands. Mm, because mm. they're no longer... Right? They are no re longer relevant. Mm. They can't come to work and show how vulnerable they are. Mm. We will judge them. Mm. We are the ones that would say, hey, so why would you come to work and let everybody see that you were battered? Judge not. Right? <laughs> you said that earlier I was listening. Yeah. Let me, let's, let me, let me, let me I wanted to ask, you know... Let's bring it to the case of this girl. Okay. Based on experience and what I have seen from this video, what level of um, activity on the part of parents can happen within the home that silently grooms a child to the expertise that we saw on this girl? <laughs> or what activity could happen? I wanted you to just shed light for the benefit of those listening to, pre to make a child... So consider this to, act, do this to do this act. and go this far. Mm. Because sometimes you cage your children, you shelter, I grew up sheltered, locked gates, don't go anywhere. Don't go. Sometimes, you know, what, what could go wrong that you would give this child such expertise? A thousand and one things can go wrong. And like I said, I haven't watched that video. Mm. I have no intentions. Every time I hear about the video, my body mm -hmm. actually breaks out in goosebumps, right? But one thing that I can really try and put my finger on is the possibility of that someone has been grooming this child. Mm, and when I say grooming, you know, because we use words and people feel mm. that, oh, um, in Yoruba, this girl, mm. ah, mm, God forbid. But probably, maybe an uncle, a relative, because most times it's not even an outsider. No, it's very no, strange for an outsider inside, to come uh, into an your enemy house and do catch things. You, from you understand? Yes. But the possibility of someone inside that home Having done something to this child consistently, consistently. Um, there was a story on, um, online a while back. A mother, a banker, whose child, she initially didn't think it was anything wrong mm. because this child was like a baby toddler. And when she would carry the child, the child would fondle with her breasts. Fondle. So she was wondering, 
She thought, oh, okay, he had missed mommy. But something in her brain kept saying, ah, ah, something is not adding up here. So she had the conversation with her husband who felt, oh, oh wait, oh, let's check. Their house help had been fondling with the boy. So it had become habits. Mm. Toddler. Uh, to all be. he needed was another four, five years. He would see anything in skirt and he would go ahead. Huh. So this kind of grooming mm. can get a child to this point. Let me, let me ask you about this. You see, one of my, 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 one of my biggest concerns in this whole conversation are the other children that attend the school. Yeah. And the reason why I'm concerned about that, because this is not the first time we're hearing this about Christian. Yeah. We're here, this was it 2018, a few years ago, where one of their teachers has mm -hmm. been convicted and is in jail right now. The, 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 the case I think he thinks is in the Supreme Court right now. Mm -hmm. He was convicted of this same issue of rape. So I can almost imagine a school trying to recondition and help to manage this, their children who are probably hearing of this thing. Like, ah, what about the teacher? What about the teacher? And they are so curious. Mm. Now we are faced with this again. So a, a parent who, who is, you know, suddenly taking the child to the school, that is having, what, how would they manage it? How, may manage that? how would you advise a parent whose child is obeying all the rules and doing all the right things and is hearing of all that about her classmates and schools and, and is really worried, that, ah, am I in this school? What can a parent do to help those other children so they don't fall into the same act? Mm -hmm. It's important that, children, that parents listen to their children. I'll tell you one of the things. The children don't like to talk to us. We know it all. The part that gets to me is we all pretend we were never their age. And that certain things did not happen when we were that age. I mean, mm. maybe that it happened didn't mean you were a part of it. Yes, when yes. I was in secondary school, most of my classmates had boyfriends and all. I didn't have. Not but necessarily because of anything, but I, I knew that they had. Maybe my, my mom, Haomorogun, was always close by me. <laughs> Mind you, that would even work with the children of this generation right. mm -hmm. because they would just get a little smarter mm -hmm. and, and hide it more. They're so smart. You know? But the point is, the point I'm trying to make is, please, 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 if your child can't talk to you, there must be a trusted person Around, that your child can talk you've to. Your child I mean, to. I have my Auntie Laomi <laughs> at any point in time. She can have the conversations. You know, there's some conversations as a parent, you're uncomfortable. Mm. You don't want to tell your child how you made mm. certain mistakes so that you don't look bad. Mm. Fortunately for me, maybe I've had, my children will tell you, I'm not one of those parents. I tell them how I struggled with school. I didn't like school. I didn't like reading and all of that. So I would have those conversations. But that is not to say there are no conversations that I'm very uncomfortable with. Yeah. Mm. I mean, was it yesterday or two days ago? My daughter said, wait. So they said marriage out, I mean, sex out of marriage. Is, is it, he said, she said, is it sin, mommy? Or is just not good? I said, oh, it's sin. It's actually sin. She said, hey, but hold on. No. I was calculating. <laughs> Shani is this age. <laughs> and you married at this age. I said, yes. I was in sin. I was fornicating. Oh, it was not right. I shouldn't she have done it. She oh, it. Yes, it's the same she's way. not <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and Me she and knows. Mom. So when we come up with this front, which we, we, we have, we've practiced so well, we're so hmm. good at doing, they know, they see the loopholes, and that's part of where the communication breakdown is. And if you did not own up, they would just not believe every that's other thing What else can I say? They, they know, as, and they see yes. you as a liar. Mm. And so we need to, you know when I say, oh, look, gosh, that's so listen, and link. link. Part of linking, aside from the person that really has a flu bone thing and you need to link to a psychotherapist, psychologist and all, part of linking is also linking to friends and family that you know what their value system is. Mm. One of the things that we've broken down over the years, how many of us have family friends? My husband's friends are here. Yeah, My yeah, friends yeah. are here. We don't have a unit in terms of friends. So the children, for every household where domestic violence is going on, right, what we have is potentially what happened to this 10-year-old girl. Mm. There's a crack. The children know. They can either wave to mommy mm. or wave to daddy. Mm. And they go to where? Or go to an uncle. Where, where, where is responsible? To an uncle. Absolutely. The, the place that so they go somewhere. Beneficial. And you know they know. So for every time an uncle... Mm. A relative of yours or their How father's you has done something that is wrong to them, mm. and you've tried to shroud it in secrecy. You set them up for greater damage. How do you manage telling your child some of your weaknesses? Recently, I, I'm not good at maths, but my child never knew. But she's in a class now, I cannot do nothing. No formula, nothing, I know nothing. I called my child, and I called the school, and I explained that I can't handle, you know, how homeworks. homeworks anymore. I don't know it. My child listened with that information. The school didn't meet me halfway. And so she just dropped 
and the result was t 10 over 60. I have never seen such a result from my first child ever in my life. She didn't work at anything on that subject. Because she Mommy doesn't you know. don't know it. Mommy can't manage it. So how, how awful should we be allowing children know? <laughs> That's another one. So it's also about handling information in bits that is appropriate for their age. Mm. Again, I mean, the, lesson, the, the, the math thing was very simple. Lesson teacher. Math lesson <laughs> simple. <laughs> you know, math lesson teacher, what, very what simple. With my child. <laughs> math lesson teacher. You know, it's interesting <laughs> that when children it, understand also, that as parents, we struggle. We don't know it all. We struggle. And when they see that, you know, one of the things I try to do is, on my job, my kids go with me. They hear the conversations. They know some of the things that are going on, and they're like, ah. The other day, my daughter was like, I think I want to be a psychologist. I think I might want to help people. I'm not a psychologist, by the way, but we work with a lot of them. And in all of this, what we need to do is to get help. Mm. Help for women that are in bad spaces. Mm. Help for children that are in bad spaces. I mean, the schools can't stop. They just need to stop. Mm -hmm. It's not about any name anymore. In fact, for all of us, we just need to stop trying to protect a oh, bad name. Sorry, please. I know we're about to run off, but there are many other parents whose children are in, that, in those in schools that have been caught in this thing. And they're like, oh, take your children out. And some of them are wondering, do I really need to? What would you say to those parents? What would be your word to those parents? My word to them would be to assess their situation. Sometimes you know the school better, right? Um, with schools these days, if you live here and you go there, you're probably meeting the same thing. Maybe it's a little more hidden. Mm. Maybe it hasn't come out to the school at all yet. Mm. But that there's one school that gives you 100%, I don't no, think no. so. And I believe that this is a space where parents need to work hand in hand with the schools. When I say parents, I'm not talking mothers. <laughs> I'm talking father and mother. mother because it is you. important that both are on the table. Mm. And to know that, you see, what is happening in your space is more Im impactful on your children than what is happening in right. the school. In the school, the prayer pressure is there. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is the teachers and the school that they are doing is there. Mm -hmm. But back at home, which will be their safe space, once it is not safe space for your children, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And we have to wrap you know, up. That, you that so has much. to be um, projected. Thank you so mm. much. We've been speaking with Tenuke Odukoya. She's an independent, not for profit making uh, organization that uh, provides enormous succor, psychological support, help for victims of sexual and domestic violence. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Um, just a reminder to our viewers, our conversation strives to represent different views, to give a richer perspective to our discussion so you can have a good show and have a few learning. Stay tuned.